Good evening, good evening. Welcome. Welcome tonight. Tonight we're going to go out soul winning. We're going we're gonna, to uh, go tell somebody about Jesus Christ that doesn't know who he is. You know, a lot of people out there think that they know Jesus, they know God, but they have no relationship with him because the only things that they know is what they've heard about through people who don't really know him. You know, there's a book that we give people every time that we lead them to the Lord, we send them a follow up text and it says knowing the real Jesus, you know, and someone has to tell them who the real Jesus is, because until they until they connect with God through a relationship and in a relationship, they're not going to know who Jesus Christ is. So until we tell them who Jesus Christ is, when they find out that Jesus is the, is the person who the Bible says he is and is a real it's a he's a real person who is resurrected from the dead. When they when they find out through relationship, they're going to fall in love with him. You know, last night uh, we were at the laundromat and um, we were washing our clothes and and there was a couple of people there. We led them to the Lord. But there was one in particular that stood out and it was she it was a very special moment. Uh, you, you know, she she was a she was a same sex attracted lady, right? A LGBTQ and a lesbian. And by her own admission, she said she's a lesbian. And 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 she said, the only thing I worry about is, you know, because I asked her, do you know if today was your last day? Would you go to heaven? And she said, well, I'm not sure because I'm a lesbian. Well, she's not sure. It's not because she's a lesbian. She's not sure because she doesn't know who Jesus is. Right. Amen. So I told her, well, let's 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 just say this prayer. Do you believe he's Lord? Do you believe that he rose from the dead? Yes. Yes. Do you be, do, do you want to make him Lord of your life? Yes. I confess him as Lord of my life. So I said through relationship, you're going to work that out with him. Because the more that you fall in love with him, the more that you know him, you'll fall in love with him. And the more you're going you're gonna to love, the, the less you're going to love the things of the world. So it was a comfort to her heart to know she can come to Jesus as a lesbian. Because he said, while we were yet still sinners, Amen. he died for us. He didn't wait for us to change. He didn't wait for us to, 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 to stop to stop loving the sin that we're entangled in. He said, come as you are. So I just want to tell you for those that are watching live and you come across this and you have some questions, it doesn't matter what you're dealing with. Begin a relationship with him because when you start to get to know him, you'll fall in love with him. And the more you love him, the less you love the things of the world. I promise you that because that happened to every one of us and everyone in this room. Amen. Every one of us. I want to share this with you today because I notice. So, you know, being on the road 10 years and and, and, and being an evangelist and going to church, to church, to church, to church. And what I, I will, you know, what I mean is, is you know, building the building, the building, the building. I've, I realized, you know, people, people that say they're Christians and, and by by by. No means am I saying you're a Christian or not a Christian, but people that say they're Christians, they lose, they lose their passion for Christianity. They lose their passion for, for the Lord. They lose their passion because it, it, it's, almost, it's almost like, you know, they forget their first love. They forget their first love. I remember when I first came to Jesus, boy, I was... Was I, I was like, yeah, you know, I love Jesus. I, I experienced the power and the glory of the Holy Spirit. I want to tell everybody. And I'm still that way. I'm still that way. But I've, I've been through seasons where I was kind of losing my passion and I was losing my enthusiasm. I was losing my Christianity. And so, and so I realized, you know, after hitting my head over and over and and, 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 you know, and going through my peaks and my valleys and going around the mountain quite a few times, I realized there's some things that I need to stay connected to in my life when it comes to Jesus Christ. 
And if I don't stay connected to these things, these habits, you know, if I don't stay connected to the Bible, if I don't stay connected in my prayer life, if I don't stay connected in my worship, you know, even when I don't want to, I find myself losing my passion for certain things. I start drifting away, right? Not so much backsliding, not so much backsliding, but that gets in there too because, because I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. You know, if I have a vehicle, if I don't put oil in it, it's not going to go very far for, for very long. If I don't put gas in it, you know, if I don't check the tires and replace the tires, it, you know, my car is going to get run down, tired, it's going to be old, and it's just not going to function the way that it's supposed to function, and it'll cost me more money than I want to pay to continue to get the things fixed in there as, as opposed to having to maintain, have maintained it. And, and in the same way, I think it's a pretty good illustration. I think it is. It, our spiritual lifestyle with God, we're supposed to keep it tuned up. We're supposed to keep it in a place where it's healthy. My relationship with God should be the most important thing in my life. And if I'm passionate for him, if I'm, if I'm hearing him, right, if, if I'm not losing my sight where he's going, you know, you know what happens? If, if, if he'll start going to the right and I'll start going to the left because I just don't see where he's going anymore. I'm not hearing from him. I'm not, I'm not focused on him enough to say, okay, I'm going to follow you, Lord. So I'm not following him. I'm following the pattern of man. So the church in, in, in many ways is following the pattern of man because they don't uphold their own relationship with God through a desire, through a desire to do so. So what they'll end up doing is they'll just start coming to church, sit down, get comfortable, and then it becomes really hard to get back up and do the things that God is calling you to do. Right? Amen. I'm the only one. I know I'm the only one who's been there. I'm, I, I'm the only one. Nobody else, is, nobody else is, does this, right? <laughs> So we start to realize that our, our relationship with God is, is, is not in a very healthy place. It's not in a sound place. So we start to, we start to try to figure life out on our own. And we, we start to do things on our own. What seems reasonable, what seems normal, what everybody else is doing, you know? And so what happens there is we start, we start drifting away from the Lord. And the things that he wants, that's where the church is, you know, the majority of the church. They come and it becomes a, 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 it becomes a ritual to come. It becomes culture. It becomes, you know, a, a habit. It's a good place to be. You know, this is the place where, where I have relationships with people. I hang out with those people. We go and we eat and, 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 and we go and we go to baseball games. We go to football games. You know, we hang out together and but but when it comes to doing what the Lord wants us to do, we don't hear from him. So we don't know. And then we, we begin to we begin to find that we're going through situations in life that don't have the strength, don't have the strength to be at peace. We don't have we don't have the strength to overcome. We don't we don't have we don't have the 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 you know, the the. The momentum, the motivation to do the things that we have to do to have success and victory over the situations that come against us in life and our families and our friends. You know, you heard this before, you know, man, I'm, I'm just always getting attacked. I'm always going through this. I'm always going through that. You know, there's, there's always opposition. You know, I have a burden on me all the time. The enemy is against me, you know, because that's church lingo, you know. That's how Christians talk, you know. <laughs> you know, well, what was the last time you spent time with God? What was the last time that you, that you went to God in, 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 in true prayer, not the 15-minute prayer? You know, we do the 15-minute prayers, our, our ritual prayers, our, our habitual prayers. But it's not the kind of prayer that you're connecting to God with here. In, in your spirit, you know, it's not that kind of prayer where 
where he stops you in the middle of your prayer and begins to download in you uh, uh, solutions. Well, if you do this, you're going to find peace. If you do this, you'll be healed. If, and you hear it coming down from the heavenlies in your spirit. And then you'll see that the way that he's taking you is the way of success. It's the way of healing. It's the way where, where uh, 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 you know, some things are broken in your life that you need breakthrough in. You know, simple things or things that you thought were very heavy and, and, and difficult, you know, with him, he makes it simple. You need an answer. He downloads it in you, in your time of worship, in your time of prayer, in your time of reading the Bible. It's always, wow, <laughs> you know, that, that revelation. And, 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 and this is the reason why, we, you know, 95% of the church have never won anyone to the Lord. And, and 80, 85%, listen, 95% of the church believers have never, have never led somebody to the Lord in prayer. Have never led them to the Lord. And 85% have only shared their faith once. It's astronomical and it's embarrassing. And I always say it's embarrassing because it's embarrassing for a Christian, right? To have such a love for God, to come to church every single weekend, to sit down, listen to the preacher, listen to the evangelist, listen to the teacher, listen to the prophet and the apostle, and not ever share their, 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 their love of Jesus Christ to someone who's out there who needs it. We're so far away from what God wants to do in our lives. Our passion is so gone, you know? So, you know, it, it's all about me, me, me. You know, gimme, give gimme, give gimme, give Lord. Lord, I need, I want, I desire, my heart, me, me, me. Gimme, give gimme, give gimme. Give my name is Jimmy. You know, we need to humble ourselves. Because really what, what that is about, it's a selfish and it's a prideful way to do church and to be a Christian. And, 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 and we understand the principles of, of, of God's nature. He gives and gives and gives and gives. He gave his only begotten son. He gave it all. He gave it all. And Jesus gave it all. First, he gave up heaven. He came to earth. He gave up his whole life. He died, was tortured, was beat, was 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 mutilated, you know, tortured. I mean, I mean, come on. And then he went to hell. And then the worst part, and I'll remind you again, was his separation from, from his father. That was worse than going to hell. And he did it for us. He gave it all. So there's nothing that we can do, nothing that we can do. We, we see, you know, we got to get away from what what I want, what I desire, what my heart wants, what I want to accomplish in my life, the businesses that I want to build, the American dream that is really the Egyptian dream. <laughs> you know, that's how the Egyptians got caught up, you know, and the enemy will catch you up. And you know what will happen? He'll take the straws out of, out of the clay so you, you make some, you, you're going to work harder to make bricks. It's going to cost you. It's going to cost you. You know, I had a business and after 25 years, I was done. When I first started my business, detailing, mobile detailing, man, I was all for it. I was passionate. I was out there every day. I was, I was, I was running. I was making money. I was doing good. But after 25 years, after 25 years, I didn't have a passion for it anymore. <laughs> but if I would have started with what I do now, if I would have understood and got into a relationship and a healthy relationship with God 25 years ago, where would I be right now? Where would I be? I'll tell you where I'll be. In a much greater place, experiencing much greater success. And not that I'm not experiencing success and victories in my life and in our lives. You know, we're, we're experiencing great success and great victories in our lives. But I think I would have been in a much greater place. Greater successes, greater victories. You know, I gave 25 years of me, me, me to me, me, me. You get what I'm saying? If I'd have gave those to the Lord, man, I, ooh. 
But, you know, his promises is that he restores us and he gives us back the years that were stolen and he'll he'll uh, 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 and he'll put us right where we always should have been. He just makes up the years. Thank you, God. Thank God that I know that <laughs> there was a time I didn't know that. Listen to this. What do we do? What do we do? How do, how do you find your passion? I'll tell you what. One good way to do it is by winning souls. Amen. Because there's a lot of revelation when you go out and you tell people about Jesus Christ. You, feel, you find a fulfillment in that. That's a good place to start if you don't know. You know, I, I, I do this exercise. I, I want you to do it really quick. And then in, in, in closing, I, I, I ask people to close their eyes. So everyone close your eyes real quick. I want you to imagine the greatest place you could possibly be, the thing that you want most. If you had your dreams, if you had it all, if you had it all, what does that look like to you? Mansion, mansions, cars, you know, uh, houses. Oh, I said houses. Boats, money, fat bank account. I mean, whatever you could imagine as far as you can imagine. I'm going to give you five more seconds. This is what the Lord says. This is what the Lord says. This is his promise to me and you. This is if, if you do if you do his will, if you connect to the Holy Spirit and you let the Holy Spirit flow through you because it's only the Holy Spirit that can reveal these things for you. But he says that he'll give you more than you could ever think of or imagine. He'll give you more than you could ever think of or imagine. And it'll be revealed to you through the Holy Spirit. This is his promise. This is his promise. The things of the world is fleeting. It's, it's, going, it's going by and by and, and, and you're not going to take it with you. But souls, there's something about souls. There's something about souls. There's something about the lost. There's, there's a premium there, and, and there's an investment there, and, and, it, and it's a, the currency of heaven. It's a, there's currency there. And, and, and if you start there, winning souls, if you start there, and by the way, Christians, you may not be connected, but this is such an easy ministry. You don't need money to go out and win souls. <laughs> you know, All you need to do is have a desire to see someone come to the Lord. To see someone come to the Lord. And I promise you that your life will be blessed and it'll be highly favored. It'll go into places you never thought it would take you. Amen. If you just if you just start there, if you don't know where to start. And also include your worship and include your prayer. And you know, increase in those things, grow in those things, strengthen yourself in these things. You so you can hear him. People are suffering. You know, someone is dying of cancer. By the way, the the, the, the girl. Who, who, who was a lesbian, her mom was dying of cancer. We're waiting to hear back a report that, that her, that her uh, m mom is healed. That's what we're waiting for. That's what we're believing in. Hallelujah. You know, we see healings all the time. We were just talking about two healings that happened to us just recent, that happened to others through our prayers just recently, through, you know, God through us. So, you know, it's not us that's doing the healing. It's God. I just have to say that. Just increase in those things. Read your Bible. Spend time with God. Pray. And I'm not talking about your 15-minute prayers, guys. Lord, thank you for this food. Thank you for my life. Thank you for my car. Thank you for my wife. And have a good day, Lord. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about that deep prayer that connects with him. And that worship that connects with him. That will have you laid out flat on the floor. Right? In his presence. Oh, my goodness. You guys, if you guys catch this, if you catch, I release that you do catch it. Lord, Holy Spirit, just release it in them. Let them see it. Let them feel it. Let them hear it in the name of Jesus. First Peter 5, 6 and 7 says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care on him, for he cares for you. Strengthen yourself in the Lord. Therefore, you don't have to have these worries and these anxieties. Put down the sins that easily beset you, the little foxes that spoil the vines. Hebrews 12 and 1. Listen, if you connect to God and if you, str you strengthen yourself in him, stop coming to church and just being 
just, just blending in with the chairs. Sometimes I can't tell if the chairs, if, where the chair ends and where the person begins. You know, we need to get up and we need to rise, church. We need to rise and be the church that God has called us to be because these are the times right now. This is the time right now where the greatest move of God is actually happening right now. And we can be the biggest part of it. Just do what God is telling us to do. Listen, we love you tonight. And we thank you for being a part. We're going to go out and win some souls, right? Amen. Go out and win some souls. Take care.